Hey guys, I'm finally getting around to reviewing my M140. Wow, that's a nice looking GT3. Oh, yummy, yummy. I'm just leaving Goodwood. A uh, beautiful day, end of October. Lovely uh, sunshine, nice temperature outside. Just about to go through a tunnel, so I guess first thing to do is a sound check. Not really allowed to go fast down here, so I won't go fast. I'll just give you a sound check. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's one way of starting a review, I guess. So, this is going to be a video where I'm not going to do any retakes or it's not going to be too fancy. Unfortunately, I've got no one to help me with the filming today, so there's going to be no external shots or no drive-bys or anything like that. I'm just going to talk a lot about this car, my obsession with M lights, sort of the history, my history. It's just going to be a talking video. So if you're not into your long <laughs> videos uh, that aren't going to have that much action, then I suggest you tune out now and don't give me abuse at the end for saying that I talk too much because it's going to be a lot of talking, I can tell you now. So, ah, now they're M140. <laughs> Every time I go to start, a nice car comes past. Now, where do we start? Let's start in end of 2012, beginning of 2013, when the M135i was initially launched. Uh, you know, it was a, it was an amazing car. Uh, I remember seeing initial pictures of it, then reading about it. Cunningham, they are so ugly, aren't they? Reading about it and getting super excited. And then watching the Chris Harris review. I mean, we've all watched the M135i versus the RS3. Hopefully we've all watched that video. I'll put a link to it below because it's my absolute, I think, favorite video on YouTube. And it's definitely something that inspired me to buy my initial M135. And ever since, obviously, stay inside the BMW group and buy many more M lights and an M2. And I'm sure that video of Chris has inspired many of you to go out and buy your M135Is or 235Is. And, uh, and then ironically, that sort of spawned me getting them and hopefully influencing, or I know I've influenced a lot of people to go out and buy their M lights. And I'm very proud of that. And, and I stand behind this product because I just think it's brilliant. And I've never had anyone really write to me afterwards and say, oh, I'm not so impressed with it. Pretty much every single person that has gone out and bought one has been very happy with their purchase. And I'm, I'm super pleased about that, but not surprised. As my sunglasses go flying off my head. What a car, what a car. So before I start, let's, Let's take a quick walk around of this particular car, because it's no standard M140. Mine has been, I wouldn't say heavily modified, but it's been played with in the right areas, I believe. So let's go and have a quick walk around the car, have a look at what the Motec Edition car adds, and then let's take a quick walk around and have a look at what I've added on top of the Motec Edition. On top of a regular M140i Shadow Edition, the Motec Edition cars come with the following. They come with a front splitter, they come with side skirts, they do come with rear spoilers as well, but my one hasn't got one because I'm just too old for that. Uh, they come with a Remus catback exhaust, this is a stainless one with carbon tips, and in fact they've gone blue inside from the heat, which is pretty cool. They've got the all important springs and spacers, so they've got eye back springs that lower the car 25 mil at the front, 20 mil at the rear, so it basically keeps the original stance, if you like. And then I've got spaces on here as well, so 12 mil at the front and 15 mil at the back. It just means the wheels sit beautifully in the arches, absolutely spot on with the bodywork. Just makes the whole car look so much better. Other things that you can't see from the outside, we've got the rear strut brace that basically sits between 
the rear axle um, just supports it better, gives it a bit more stiffness. The M240i has one, I believe the M2 has one as well, um, and you do notice that. Under the bonnet, I have a pipe across filter in here, which probably gives you a couple of horsepower, but definitely gives the engine more chance to breathe. And you can hear it opens up, you can hear more induction sound with that. And with the Motec edition cars, you get your own individual labels. So this car is 0007, built by BMW, improved by Motec, approved by some bloke. And my one's actually got a comical sticker on the other side that I think Mike and Patrick thought was hilarious. I'm yet to know what 69 means. But I'm sure I'll find out when I grow up. But otherwise, it's a totally stock engine. Other upgrades that my car's got over the Motec edition are Tarox brake rotors or discs, EBC yellow stuff pads, Goodridge braided brake lines, um, which you can't see here. Uh, I've also recently had fitted the Bilstein adjustable dampers, which basically allow the car to still use its adaptive suspension. So it's in comfort or in sports, you've still got the two settings and they're really impressive. I've got the M Performance LSD, which again you can't see. That was fitted when the car was brand new from Barry BMW. So that sits underneath there and in the middle of the axle and basically means that I don't have an open diff anymore. So coming out of tighter hairpins, etc., you get a lot more traction. It also wants to go sideways a lot easier and a lot more controllable. So it's very much like an M car now with, with an LSD. Going inside, I've got a few upgrades as well. So I've got the M Performance steering wheel, which is Alcantara. Really nice to hold. Don't think I could ever go back to a leather one now, even though the leather ones are lovely. I'm just so used to the Alcantara steering wheel. Then I've got the P3 gauge that gives me a number of functions. I did a whole video about that. Um, but you can look at all your temperatures that you can't really normally access in the normal computer. Um, Nought to 60 times, a few other bits and bobs in there, which is really cool. And then most recently, as in yesterday, I fitted the fantastic Michelin Pilot Cup 2 tyres, which are just incredible and have only just become available for the M lights. So 225. 40 18 fronts and two four five 35 18 rears uh, and these are actual the prop these are the proper size for the m light so they go straight onto the 436 wheels or the 719 wheels and you might notice that i've also got the ferret gray alloys from the older cars or the regular m140 that's because these are a spare set of wheels that i had for my m135 years ago so put these cup twos on there for the last few days of sunshine Hopefully you enjoyed that little video and you now understand what is different about my M140 to a stock one. You can see that quite a few things have been changed, but subtle things, no extreme, you know, I'm not running nitrous or 1000 horsepower, it's still a very stock engine, uh, but I've, I've improved the areas that I believe need improving on the stock M140 if you're really going to push it. Don't get me wrong, as an absolute stock car, a daily car, it's a fantastic bit of kit, but if you want it to do more impressive things, then you've got to change a few bits and bobs. Now let's rewind to 2013, when I got my first M135i, and that was September 2013. It was an s Blue five-door auto. Didn't go for the adaptive suspension, even though Chris Harris had recommended it. I was stubborn. I saved money and I think I probably spent it elsewhere on the options list and at the time I wasn't really to know, you know, the car felt amazing, it just felt incredible um, on the passive setup, it felt an incredible bit of kit. Fast forward two years and I traded my blue M135i into uh, to a white one, a three door and it was an LCI model so it was a 20, it was a 2015, late 2015, September 2015 and that was a manual. LCI three door and it had the all important adaptive suspension and that made a huge huge difference the car felt so much better out of the box the problem with that one though was the manual gearbox 
I was never really willing to admit it, but the manual box wasn't great. It wasn't great from day one. It got better, and by the time I traded that car in, the box was feeling a much better box. You know, by about 15,000 miles in, it was feeling so much better, a bit freer. But I never really gelled with that manual box. It just, it was okay on certain days, once it was warm, and on certain drives, if you weren't rushing it too much, but it never liked to be rushed. It wouldn't go into gear when you tried to rush it. And I just never really fell in love with that box. So whilst I had that car, I also brought a black BMW M2, which a lot of you might know about, a lot of you might not know about. I had that car for just under a year. I had it for 11 months. I know a lot of people think I had it for a few months and I flipped it, but it was 11 months I owned that car. Uh, it was a bit of a uh, rushed buy in a way. Um, good friend of mine who, who worked at BMW um, got me a very early build slot. So I jumped on that car and used money that I didn't really have, purchased it, used it for 11 months and truth be told, didn't really lose any money on it. So I had a great, great, great time and great fun with that car, but I couldn't afford to keep it at the time. So I got rid of the M2 and then started modifying the M135. So first visits down to the guys at Motec and I put the springs and spacers on that made a huge difference. Really, I can't stress what a difference they made to that car. And it really became, I started to fall in love with it again. It was a great, great bit of kit. Just as I was falling in love with that, then started working a lot more with Motec, Tony Lewis and stuff and we started developing the Motec cars or the Joe Achilles edition cars or whatever you want to call them. We started developing them. So it was only natural that I sort of had to jump into one <laughs> seeing as I was like, not the brand ambassador, but you know, it was a car that was sort of modeled around my spec and things that we discussed. So I find myself in one of these. I've had this car now for about seven months. I've actually done 8,000 miles in it which I know isn't a massive amount of miles, but when you factor that this year, 2018, I have been in the country probably about 50 days since I purchased this car back in the middle of March. So considering I've not really been around to drive it, when I have driven it, I've done some big trips on it. I've done the, I've done two Petrolhead tours. I did Scotland when it was brand new, and then I did the Alps and the Pyrenees. So those are two massive trips, probably put about 4,000 miles in the car with those trips alone. I've done a track day at Rockingham. I've done a track day at Landau on it. Um, I've done lots of big drives. Um, it's difficult, you know, it's first world problems, I know, but thankfully, recently I've been getting lots of lovely press cars. You know, I had that beautiful Sonoma Green RS4 very recently for 10 days, I think it was. And when you've got something like that on your doorstep that's a press car, you tend to want to use that all the time, even if you're going to the shops and back, you know, it's, it's not your car, you might as well put miles on it, and also it's there for a reason, you want to you wanna drive it, learn it, understand it, so that I can feed back to you guys and girls about, you know, what the car is like. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things that this car, I feel that I don't drive it enough, but actually when I look down at the odometer and see almost 8,000 miles, I know that I have driven it a fair amount. Now let's talk about the upgrades. As you've seen, the MoTeC Edition car is absolutely mega. What you get with it is really fantastic, really transforms the car, uh, makes it feel a lot more purposeful. Uh, I reckon it really bridges the gap between a normal m Light or M140 and say something like an M2. The M cars are fantastic when you're pushing on and you're pushing through that travel, but at cruising pace like this, you do feel a lot of the bumps and all the surfaces and the roads and stuff, it just never sort of settles down. And that's that's what makes the M-Lite so good when you've got adaptive suspension. Now this one's obviously got the Bilstein damper units, uh, which are incredible. They're they're better in comfort mode than the, than the stock dampers, and they're stiffer and more supportive in the sports mode as well. They don't change the spring rates because the actual springs uh, it uses the existing springs. So in this car's case, I just whack the same eye back lowering springs onto the new dampeners. So yeah, so you get the same ride height, uh, same spring rate, but you obviously get, there must be more compression and stuff on them for when they're in sports because you definitely get 
uh, what feels like a stiffer ride and a more supported ride, so they're fantastic. Other very recent upgrades that I've had to this car, and when I say very recent, I mean very recent, as in <laughs> fitted them last night, are the Michelin Pilot Cup 2 tyres. And now they're a tyre that I go on a lot about my channel, and I know, like with the M3 CS video, a lot of you commented saying, oh, is this a Michelin advertisement, or is this about the M3 CS? Well, I think that tyre on that car, on any car, really does transform it. I'm, I'm, I, I have got a slight tyre fetish, and I do love Michelins. I've, I've used Michelin tyres since I used to race mountain bikes downhill a million years ago, and I've always loved their tyres. They've always as far as I'm concerned they've never made a bad tyre you know they've always even their more budget or realistic affordable tyres are very good quality but when you get to their high performance tyres like the Cup 2 you just can't go wrong it's just a fantastic tyre and the Pilot Supersport that comes stock in these cars they're a brilliant all-rounder it's, it's now been sort of superseded by the Pilot Sport 4 S's but you can't get them in 18 so the Pilot Super Sports or the PS4s are a very good all-round tyre for this car certainly something that's that would get you through all seasons in southern England anyway I mean there's yeah there's a couple of very cold months when it gets icy they're not brilliant because effectively they are still summer tyres but um, but then the Cup 2s are just that extra level they're just they're high performance tyres that once you've got a bit of temperature in them they just come alive and what I've noticed in the sort of 100 miles that I've done on them so far, and in fact, what I noticed after 10 miles, after I scrubbed them in a little bit, is just the turning has completely changed. And you wouldn't think that that would be possible. It feels like I've got a completely different front end of the car. The way the shoulder of the tire must support uh, support itself or something. I don't understand how it works. You'd need to you'd need to speak to my buddy Jonathan Benson who runs tire reviews on YouTube. I'll put a link to his channel below because if you're into your tires you need to watch him because he knows what he's talking about and uh, again he's a massive Michelin fan. Not just Michelin fan, he's very unbiased but he would be the first to admit that Michelin makes some of the best tires on the planet. So yeah, go and check his channel out for more info on, on these particular tyres and other Michelins. But they're just brilliant. They just feel so supportive. And when you turn in, it just the front end's just really there. And that's the one thing that I've found was missing from this car. After all the work that I'd done to it with Motec, I think I'd almost, with the rear brace and the lowering and the diff, the LSD, I think I'd almost overdone the rear end of this car so the rear end was really supportive i found the front end especially on circuits recently the front end was struggling a little bit so i was looking at maybe getting the m3 m4 uh, lower control arms that give the front tires a bit of negative camber because that's one thing again that the m lights suffer from just because they're set up as more of a fast road car than a, than a track car or an m car so there's not much negative in fact there's hardly anything any negative camber on the front tires or front wheels so you can change that with the lower control arms but putting these tires on it's just changed the whole front end feel it really has and, and, and suddenly the car feels very balanced again it feels very very eager to turn in like massively and that's exactly what i wanted so i'm, I'm really dying to get this car out on a track doing a track day very soon oh look at that audi quattro Oh, wow. <laughs> Excuse me while I get very excited. That was pretty cool. Um, and ironic as well, because we're talking about front end grip and those those quattros are a bit renowned for not having the best front end grip. Bit of an understeery beast. But what a car still. What a weapon. So yeah, that's really, it's it's almost like the icing on the cake for me. It really has, It's it's improved that last area and, and bit of the car that I felt was lacking from everything that I'd done so far. So now the car is pretty much, uh, it, it's it's exactly what I wanted it to be. You know, it's it's um, it's a very comfortable, again, we'll put it into comfort, knock it over into drive. So it closes the exhaust valves. Now the Remus exhaust is fantastic. It really is. And in fact, this is a really good place to test it. So I'll put it back into manual. Now this is, the valves are closed now, so. You can hear the exhaust, but not too badly. There's no cracks and pops or bangs. 
you can hear the turbo induction and that's because of the pipe across filter you can actually hear the induction there which is great see it's a really nice sound but it's not too antisocial you put it into sports or sports plus and then it gets really loud so now listen to this and you get lots of overrun and burbles and it's it's a really nice sound and when you're in somewhere like the Alps and you're absolutely caning it top of third top of fourth the sound that this car produces is just awesome you can hear the turbos whistling through the exhaust you can hear that insane sound lovely skyline so many nice cars out today but you can hear that you can hear everything and, and the exhaust really it just does wonders to this car because the very latest M140s especially now with this OPF OPF filter I think I've got that right it's really strangled the the, the, the sounds of the cars you know it's it's it you don't get any of the burbles or the pops and bangs and stuff so this is a real anti-social M140 if you like when you want it to be look I come off don't know if you can hear that interverse but you can quieten it down put it into comfort over into drive or eco pro if you want I like driving this car in drive it's it's very relaxing the the gearbox calibration is fantastic it's very easy there's there's just it just does it you can hear it's a bit droney than than a standard car of course you do hear more of a drone 70 miles an hour 80 miles an hour when you're in france obviously you do hear a bit more of a drone than the stock exhaust but it's nothing too bad and too droney yeah you, you, you forget about it in 10 seconds i've heard some systems like the mpe that certain revs on the motorway can become very droney even when the when the exhaust flaps are closed and i think that's what makes the the remus so good it sounds great when the when the exhaust flaps are open but it but it quietens down and sounds really good when you want it to be quiet and subtle and we're just coming out of the town here so we'll put it back into manual ZF 8 speeds a great box it really is you know I had one of my original M135 I've got it back on this one and it, it does everything so well it's it is too good for its own good uh, the, the DCT on like you know the M current M cars is uh, is brilliant because it's kind of it's a bit choppy it makes you feel like you're in a race car whereas the ZF does everything so effectively and efficiently and that's why it's now in the M5 because it's actually probably a more efficient box, more efficient in terms of actual, you know, using less fuel, but also more efficient in the way it goes up the box because it's not, it doesn't break traction between gear shifts. You can you can change in this car mid corner, you know, nearly full throttle depending on how hard you're pushing, and it really doesn't sort of disrupt the feel and the balance of the car. It's just it's very nice. You just pull a gear, and and there's very little change in balance in the car whereas in a DCT you do that mid corner and you do feel the the car move around a little bit because it kind of does interrupt the balance of the car a bit but it's a brilliant gearbox really is um, and the other thing is when you're in eighth and you're on a motorway it's sitting at sort of below 2000 rpm and it's very efficient and I know a lot of people say oh but oh, I don't care about efficiency or whatever or you know efficiency is not top of my list it kind of is I mean people that say that are kind of kidding themselves I think a lot of the time especially when you've only got what a 52 litre tank I think it is in this car and you know if you do do long road trips you do want the cars that have the ability to always have good efficiency because what, what would be the point if it was doing 20 miles to the gallon all the time it wouldn't be that fun it'd be expensive I mean fuel is what getting close to £1.50 a litre again in this country that's a lot of money um, and you know we a lot of us have got these M lights because they are so affordable so if they can offer good efficiency as well then you know I'm all for it I think big thumbs up for that so so it's uh, obviously when you're really pushing on when I took this to the Alps and I was trying to keep up with much faster more exotic machinery yeah those figures <laughs> those figures came down big time you know I was I was nowhere near the the quoted figure of course but just depends on how heavy your right foot is but I absolutely love these cars I really do um, 
yeah, I'll, I will miss this. You know, there's there's a good chance that an M2 competition is coming my way soon. Uh, there are a number of reasons for that, which I'll go into once I've got the car. But I'm going to miss the practicality of this. You know, I've, I've currently got my mountain bike in the back. I'm actually heading off to, to do some mountain biking now. And I just think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's such a practical, usable car. And that's what hatchbacks are, you know, they're practical, they're usable. Um, that's what makes them so good. And it's subtle as well, you know, this is debadged. Um, let's just give it some, it's a nice bit of road actually. Oh, it's so good, isn't it? It's so good. Oh, the, that front end grip that I was telling you about, it's really, I'm not used to it yet. I'm, I'm, I'm really not used to it. I've only had the tires on since last night and it, it, it almost feels, when I turn in, it almost feels like I've got an extra three, four percent of steering lock on there. It just, it just turns. It's like, okay, you want to go that way? Oh, it's brilliant. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that exhaust here now, but imagine what it's like with the roof open when you're going up sort of an alpine pass with stone walls either side and oh the sound is just it's brilliant it really is it's a fantastic bit of kit it's an a road weapon and in this weather okay there are faster hatches you know an rs3 point to point is probably always going to be faster especially when it starts getting damp and cold but they're just a bit numb compared to this they just don't have the same excitement to me And things like the brilliant Seat Leon Cooper and the Golf R, you know, especially the latest 7.5, they are brilliant cars. They're really, really capable. But I don't know, I I had a Golf R for about a week out in Australia and although it was a great piece of kit, I just never had the excitement that I did in this car. It just did everything so well. And I think that's what the VAG group cars tend to do you know with the exception of things like maybe the club sport s that side race sid's got you know that thing's got a real naughty character to it and it, it's 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 something very different to the rest of the mold whereas i think a lot of the like the rs3 the golf r the golf gti you know they're they're brilliant brilliant cars and and i, I know people think that i you know slag them off and in fact in the review I did with Car Advice, I actually said that the Golf R was a better all-round car, but still in the comments, people said that, oh, you're just a biased BMW person. But if people had listened, I'd actually said at the end that I think the Golf R is the better package, but I would still take the BMW. So I, I never write off other brands. I think they do a fantastic job. Uh, and then you've obviously got Mercedes, the A45, brilliant piece of kit. You know, that's getting superseded now, um, but still point to point probably quicker than than this car especially as an all-round or an all-year-round package and in fact if you don't follow Steph AB TV I suggest that you give Steph a follow I'll put a link to his YouTube channel below because he's just purchased a lovely red A45 um, AMG and he's already done some bits to it he's just had a Remus exhaust fit to etc they're fantastic cars obviously there's a new one about to hit the shores. Uh, there's an A35 now as well, so you kind of get the feeling that Mercedes have kind of not copied BMW, but they are going down the M light route. So the A45 will probably be over 40 grand, and the 35 is going to be under 30 grand, uh, under 40 grand. I don't know how they're going to price them, but I'm guessing that's that's how they're kind of pitching it. It's a more affordable A45, probably a better daily. I don't know, but. Yeah, these hatches, regardless of whoever makes them, they're all they're all brilliant. You know, the Hyundai i30N, I haven't driven. Again, I, I've heard amazing things about it, but obviously that's got its cons. And without being a bad snob, it's a Hyundai, so the interior, the fit and finish is not going to be as nice as the German equivalents. Uh, then we've uh, we you know we've got other cars like the Focus RS, which I've reviewed and raved on about a lot. You know, it's a fantastic car, but again nowhere near as fast in a straight line as number one figure suggests and number two like one of these on rs3 or anything like in terms of straight line pace it really lacks 
Uh, and the other problem I found with the Focus RS is how thirsty it is. Uh, it's, I think I managed about 100 miles for a whole tank when I had a press car. Um, and things like the interior, again, just the fit and finish, just they're just, they're just a bit, it, it just lets the car down. You know, it's, the infotainment system's not great and just certain things. And, and I do talk about this a lot in, on social media that I, I don't care too much about interiors. People write off BMWs for having old fashioned interiors and fair enough, this kind of face here, I know it's been facelifted recently, but these buttons and stuff, yes, what they stem back to 2011, 2012, something like that. So six years, but everything works. I know where everything is, especially because I'm very, this is very familiar to me, everything works. And to me, the most important thing about any car is the driving position, especially for me, because I'm six foot, nearly six foot four, and I need a good driving position and BMWs, I would say are only second to Porsche who make the best driving positions. So to me, that's that's what the most important thing is, driving position, good driving position, uh, good infotainment system. I drive six, my opinion is the best on the market. Um, it's, it's not, you know, it's not the most modern looking. I haven't got screens all here. I can't ask it to, I, cannot, I can talk to it. It's got obviously a voice function. But it hasn't got all that gimmicky stuff that the new A-Class a has got, but do you use any of that? Do I use gesture control in my 7 Series? No, of course I don't. Um, and, and, and that stuff, to me, I don't care about. And I know it's what sells the car, it's what advertising campaigns talk about, but to me, I didn't buy this M140 because of the interior. I bought it because of the way it drives, because of the way it sounds, its character, its driving position. It's comfortable, you know, it's very comfortable. It makes a great sound. It's rear wheel driven. It's naughty when you want it to be naughty, but it will also do the daily daily chores, no problemo. You know, it's just easy, easy. So it depends what you're looking at. You know, if, if you want interiors, beautiful interiors, then Audi. Don't like Audi are, you know, Audi make the sexiest interiors. I think they've gone too far with their very latest ones. Um, with all the touchscreen stuff, but something like the one that was in that RS4 that I was in the other day, or the current RS3, they're beautiful, very simplistic, very modern, and just nice, you know, really spot on. But if you want interiors, but, you know, there's different manufacturers focus on different things, and people talk about Mercedes interiors as being nice. They are nice to look at, but trust me, the plastics in Mercedes, especially even the S-Classes, are just... They're really bad. Like when you start prodding around, they're not great. So I wouldn't say that you know that that, that one interior is better than the other. It's all very subjective, uh, and it and it does come down to what you're used to as well. If you're a Mercedes person, you're used to Mercedes infotainment, then you're probably going to want to continue that way. But I just uh, personally, I think the iDrive system it just works so well. It's so simple. It's so easy to use. It's something that they've tweaked and changed for what well over 10 years now how long has it been out probably when did they introduce iDrive I'm guessing 2004 2005 ish maybe even earlier than that but yeah it's certainly got a lot better than the original one and um and the six as it is in this or the seven or oh, big car me or the seven that is now in the new eight series just looks amazing I haven't played with that yet but I'm sure it's an improvement over the six. So, yeah, do I need to say much more about this car? There's not much more I can really cover. Uh, I don't want to bore you guys to absolute death. The, they're phasing out the six-cylinder, which I think is a big part and a big heart of this car. Uh, the new one, I'm sure the new one is going to be quicker. It's going to be more efficient. It's probably going to have a better ride, quicker time around than, you know, the Nürburgring, but fundamentally, I know it's it's going to have lost a big part of its character in the form of the straight six. In the same way that you know the current Caymans and Boxers, I know people say they're brilliant. Of course, they'll be brilliant. They're Porsches. Anything with a Porsche badge on it is going to be a good car. But I don't care what anyone says to me about the the new Cayman and Boxers. They've got four pots, and at least. As a bystander, I've not driven one, but when they go past, they sound terrible. They sound like Volkswagen Beetles, you know, from the 70s. Um, 
and that's just a big disappointment when you know the older cars the 981s and stuff were just so that sound that flat six it just it's so much character in the car you know the gt4 part of the reason i love the gt4 so much and that was basically a stock carrera engine anyway in that car it wasn't even a wasn't even a proper gt engine but the sound of it was just it was to die die for and so addictive as is the sound in these cars you know it's just it's really when you get them screaming they're just fantastic anyway i hope you enjoyed this video i know it's very random and it's a lot of me talking but i did warn you at the beginning it would be a lot of me talking and not the most exciting or interesting video no drone shots or flybys or anything like that just because i don't have the time and you know those those videos like my recent m2 competition video that you've hopefully seen that took me 20 hours to edit you know it's uh and you know i'll be lucky to make 150 quid back <laughs> on youtube uh, ad revenue and when you factor in i put in about 80 quid worth of fuel um expenses of food and stuff you know i'm, I'm lucky to have broken even on that car um so yeah youtube i, I want to have a i'm going to do a whole catch-up video soon um talk about sort of what i'm going to be up to over the next six months talk about this year and what i've been up to and um and just kind of you know talk about um the fact that i hate being stuck behind a toyota prius that doesn't know where it's going out in the middle of the countryside things like that so yeah please make sure you stay tuned in guys and uh give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video thumbs up really help um they give me you know they give the algorithm more of a chance and and the video more of a chance to get more views so even if you weren't that impressed with the video if you give us a thumbs up that'd be great if you got this far and surely i deserve a thumbs up <laughs> maybe you've just woken up halfway through the video but um yeah and leave any comments questions below but yeah massively impressed with this car um and yeah just to add at the end you know these these motec edition cars i believe mike told me that they're in the process of building car number 23 at the moment so they are still building more cars whilst we can get stock of them so yeah contact tony lewis i'll put tony's email just below you can get yourself a finance quote on him because they are they're a lot more affordable than you think when you buy it as a package and obviously if you've already got an m140 and you want to do any of these modifications then pick up the phone to mike or drop motec an email and get them to give you a quote because there's uh you know you can get everything done individually or you can get the whole lot done together so um yeah lots of options but i would definitely advise against getting against i'll definitely advise uh, getting some of the extras that I've had on this car because they transform it, especially things like springs and spacers. The diff is just mega. I, I know the diff is expensive, but it's just brilliant. It really is. Just allows you to do things like that everywhere. Cheeky little skids, um, even with cup twos on it. So anyway, I will. Uh, I'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next one. Cheers.